Here it is. Here is the rear hydraulic box. Look what just happened to come in the mail here. Here it is, the rear hydraulic suspension setup. All right, guys, thanks for coming back to the shop again. I'm James, your host here at Spiral Design Works. And today we're gonna to be building this, this guy, the hydraulic rear suspension uh, set up for the torsion bars to raise and lower the bus, probably about 10 inches. I'm using some four inch stroke rams and uh, we're gonna be putting that guy together. So if you're interested, stay tuned, let's go. All right, let's take a look at this bad boy. So this is the portion housing that we made in the last episode and these are my laser cut pieces I got them all ground down and all the laser slag uh, ground off the edges very important when you're TIG welding and now you can see that this thing has uh, basically jigged itself together that's why I love doing the notches uh, I leave these pieces short so that I can fill this with weld instead of having this flush and then you just kind of put a bump or you'd have to v-groove it or something so this way it makes it a little easier everything tabs in i'll be able to weld all down around in there and then uh i'm not going to talk about this this little feature here yet but uh you can see how it all jigs in together so i'll be able to really and i've got it nice and centered on the torsion tube so i'll be able to go ahead and just weld this baby up well, it's going to be a lot of welding. I'm just going to tackle it all together and then uh, go from there. Here it is. I don't think it's going anywhere. I just kind of grinded the top a little bit to clean that up. But. So you can picture here the rams are going to be uh, pinned through here, two rams. And then this thing's gonna go. Uh, 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 uh. Ooh, it's hot as shit. The rams have four inches of stroke, so figure all the way to there. Uh, uh. Oh yeah. All right, guys. Here is the solid model of the rear hydraulic box. You can see this part here with the torsion bars going through there, and then the rams are gonna be extending. So you always want to extend for the power stroke and there's less power on retraction so we're extending to lift the bus. So I have this stuff kind of transparent right now of course. But you get the idea of what we're working with there. Let's do it. All right, so I gotta get all of these pieces prepped for welding, and uh, I already did that one. Um, so I'm using a combination of different tools. I'm using uh, a little cutoff wheel to get right into the corners of these guys, 
I'm going to zip that up. And then I'm using uh, the grinder, and I'm also going to use the uh, two inch little guy in there. And got to get all of that uh, laser slag off, otherwise, it causes problems and starts sparking and crap on you. Lots to do here, let's do it. Alright, so this is the bottom piece uh, of the rear hydraulic. I'm going to be using my Swage Swag, I guess, off-road uh, finger brake. Uh, I did a video on this, guys, if you want to build one of these. And then I added these extra pieces of angle that you can take out, which gives you a tighter bend radius. So, uh, just FYI. So we're going to line this up on my little marks. And I'm go for it. Having a tough time on this quarter inch. Huh. Come on, baby. There we go. I didn't have it tight and tight enough. We're just looking for a little kick up, so I think I think that'll do. That's it. Just a little skid plate action. Thought I would show a quick uh, what I'm doing here, tapping these holes. This is a, a plate that goes in the rear hydraulic suspension. So I just have a collet in here holding my tap, my hand tap, and then I'm just uh, going by hand here. And that way it's nice and square. It's really important that this thing stays nice and square. So I don't want to be tapping off all crooky. So that worked pretty good. Unfortunately, I can't power tap it. That would be really sweet. All right, so here is the rear hydraulic box. As you can see, it is self-jigging. All the little tabs come through here. So I'm gonna actually tack this part together, take it back apart, weld up the bottom of this uh, a little bit, put it all back together, and then start welding it up. So. Uh, looks pretty good though. So hydraulic, two hydraulic rams, or one bolts here, one bolts here, comes up, and then that rear torsion part here is going right here. So it looks pretty good. I got it all ground down, so it's ready to paint. And then I'll actually, I'm probably gonna throw in some uh, that weld through primer in there too before I do the final, just to make sure everything gets coated real good. She's smoking. All right, so I wanted to get those welded and now I can put it all back together. And I suppose I could have taken the bottom off and done the same thing, but whatevs. All right, looking pretty good. Pretty hot. Good. I'll weld it up on the inside. This thing is ready to go. I did elect to not weld in the back plate, so it just snaps in there for now. So I'm thinking when I do the install of the other stuff, it might be a lot easier for me to be able to get in there, and then I can weld that in after. So, so yeah, looks good. Still a little toasty. I love those corner welds. <laughs> They're so easy. Just lay them in there. Let's 
It's amazing how you can turn solid steel into little strings. Look what just happened to come in the mail here. My Chief WP uh, Rams, they're inch and a half bore, four inch stroke. There's the info right there, one inch rod. And I'm planning to run the same ones in the front. So I'll set this up now so we can get a little look -see. Boom. Ba bam. <laughs> I seem to say that a lot. Anyways, check it out, guys. Here it is the rear hydraulic suspension setup that I designed here at Echelon Design Works. So we're utilizing the rear torsion bar still and the rear spring plates. I'm probably going to do the a Z in these, but. Gives you an idea of what's happening here. We've got the factory torsion tubes here that these will get welded to. And then we've got the twin rams. I just have this held up right now with this, but the rams will be uh, pinned in through here. And then as the rams uh, collapse or retract, we'll lower the van. And then when they extend, uh, it'll raise the van. So, yeah, get it, and then that way it'll still be using the springs as its suspension. So, the springs will be allowing you to do the bumps, and basically, we're just adjusting where we're holding the torsion bar. So, we're not, it's not like airbags or something where we're using the bags or the hydraulics as the suspension. This is just gonna be locating the torsion bars and letting the springs, the torsion springs, torsion bars do their job with the suspension. All right, time to get this thing welded in. The hole before the great grafting. What's up, my boy? Is Ricky coming to say hi? All right, this thing's ready to go in. All right, so here is the final of this guy. I decided to uh, weld it up all the way. I had it stitch welded, but I didn't want rust and stuff coming through there eventually or anything, so, and that way it's sealed, and then I'll weld the back panel on eventually too. So if there is a massive oil leak, it should all be contained in here and it won't be leaking all over the ground too, so. Should be good in case we lose a line someday. But pretty happy with it. One of the things I'm concerned about is um, overheating this and uh, messing up the seals I have on here. So, uh, it's working really nice right now. So, I'm just gonna do it in tacks, I guess, and then uh, we'll go from there. One more time.
All right, so there it is all tacked in. Obviously, I got sheet metal work to do and uh, get the back panel welded on. Uh, I need to make the shift rod and a few things, but uh, looks good. I am very happy with that. And then I got to, I'm of course going to tie in. I wish I cut that a little tighter. The cross pieces, I could have welded right to it, but now they're a little short, which sucks. So I'll have to do a little L brackets or something, but that's all right. So it would have been better off to see this side's nice and tight. So this side here, I'll be able to weld, weld those right there. And I'm going to do a two by two across on the bottom of that, a two by two tubing, or maybe even yeah, two by two, I guess, because I got to clear that bolt. But it looks good. I like it. All right, guys. So it's the next day, and I'm uh, MIG welding the caps here onto the torsion tubes. And I'm keeping an eye on this, making sure this thing still turns. And it is getting a little stiff on me here, but I'm thinking once I get all the way around, it'll be nice. And I'm using my uh, little uh, thing here to keep an eye on these. I don't want to overheat uh, these, so I'm just doing like a little, about a one inch weld at a time, working my way around, and then cooling it down with air. To keep it below like 80 degrees, you know, at this at the seal here, because I can't, change that so that's what I'm doing all right I didn't do much filming today but this is uh I added a two by three or one and a half by three cross member going across, tying into the frame. I added this uh, two by two basically across the bottom of the torsion bars, finished welding up these brackets. Got that, I'm, I'm not the greatest MIG welder, but. And then from this side, finished up the frame, uh, the reinforcement there, got this is all, all welded in, you saw earlier. And now I'm contemplating what I got to do over here. I think I'm going to have to notch this up quite a bit. Probably, probably has to be at least above here. So it's going to have to go. Uh, uh, uh. So that'll be interesting to clear the axle. All right, guys, thanks for following along on this project. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know the drill. And we'll see you at the next one. Thanks. Peace. So